Good evening, Rancho Cordova. There are so many people here tonight. It's absolutely wonderful, and I'm really thrilled. What an incredible group of people you are, and thank you all for coming so much. I'm proud to live in Rancho Cordova. Thank you, my dear. How, what a wonderful. Let us give this lady an applause. Thank you. That is the whole goal of tonight. It is. Ladies and gentlemen, I should stop right now. <laughs> that is the whole goal of tonight. Thank you. Um, I think I'm not doing it the way you told me to do it, Melody. Okay. So you're going to go right here to... Uh, yeah. To okay. All right. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. Thank you. Woo. Uh, applause. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, for, for um, like two years now, what is it, Ted, um, Jay's been trying to get me to, to do an iPad, and I'm sorry, I don't do iPads. And so obviously I have trouble with these things too. Um, you know, I, it, this has been an incredible year. Everything that, that Shelley said, everything that Ross said, everything that Larry said is absolutely accurate. And you all know that because you've lived it. Every one of you has lived various aspects of what's been talked about already. Um, when I sat down to think, to, to pull through my calendar and to pull through everybody else's calendar and to think, what is there I should talk about? I, first of all, I, I thought about it in terms of turning pages, and then I realized there is so much in our portfolio of activities this year and things that Rancho Cordova has been doing or has been asked to do or places that we've all been asked to be that it's really like chapters. There is so much that has happened. So it's gonna be difficult to summarize, but let's talk about the first chapter. Um, when people ask me, how's our city doing? I always, I think that's a little bit funny because after all, it's not just my city, it's your city. And so I always say to them, how is it in your neighborhood? You know, what's it like on your street? What do you think about the state of the city? That's really important because we, are, we have no throwaway neighborhoods. Rancho Cordova is only as strong as its weakest neighborhood. And so hold on to your seats because we're going to go through the chapters of what has happened this year. Okay, Melody disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley. There really are chapters here, and chapter one is not transportation. <laughs> there we go. All right, okay, so chapter one truly is community events. And of course, the first thing that we all remember about this year is our incredible birthday party. We celebrated. We celebrated our 10 years in a big way and thousands of people participated. So I wanna see a show of hands. There were 250 people who voted for hot dogs. Did you vote for a hot dog? Oh, look at that. Did you bake a birthday cake or any of the birthday cake? Oh, thank you, Jessica. Um, who was in the lip dub? See? Did you find yourself in the mosaic? Great. I haven't. Um, 
what did you contribute to the time capsule? Don't laugh. My husband's my husband was tra uh, uh, transitioning from his BlackBerry to a real iPhone, and his entire BlackBerry with with plugs and cords and charger and everything is in the time capsule. That's what that's what te uh, technology will do for you. Um, so thanks to your efforts and all of the civic entrepreneurs in this room, our birthday was the biggest hit in the region. So let's talk about the rest of the fun that we've been having this year. And remember, like Shelley said, we're successful here in Rancho Cordova, not just because of the City Council and the Community Council and the Chamber of Commerce, but also because of our brand new Travel and Tourism Bureau. They're all part of what's making Rancho Cordova a socially healthy place to be. So, who participated in the 4th of July? Volunteered or attended? What about the air show? Volunteered or attended? Um, and you know, I have to tell you, in all the years, growing up in the Air Force and all the years of air shows, I've never actually seen the snowbirds before. They were completely different from the other teams that we've had but they were more like an aerial ballet. Um, it was wonderful to celebrate the an anniversary of the Berlin airlift, to have the German Consul General come and wade through the groups of people who had come to visit with the uh, uh, with Gail Halverson, who got the idea to drop candy to the little kids in Berlin. That was so rewarding. And um, the Canadian snowbirds are as proud of their Consul General as she is of them. And it was wonderful to entertain those people. So, um, did your children participate in Kids Day at the Park or the Rotary Easter Egg Hunt? Um, did you attend the International Festival? Who uh, performed in the International Festival? Did anybody here do that? What wonderful groups we've had. Um, did you go to the Friday nights at the Village Green? And we've had the four art exhibits. Um, who went to the Burgers and Brews and found themselves a piece of art to take home? Found them, oh, Karen, found themselves a new beer to take home. <laughs> <laughs> so the, as, as Ross said, the expansion of arts and culture brought us not only a, a group of artists that we really didn't actually even know existed in Rancho Cordova, but they also brought us the River City Concert Band, the, um, uh, the Civic Light Orchestra, and that wonderful group of people who are going to be performing for you f during the dessert re uh, um, reception afterwards. We entertained the largest youth rugby tournament in California over at Mills Junior High and Cordova High. It was absolutely amazing. Thousands of kids came from high schools and um, kind of semi-pro soccer uh, rugby tournaments all over Northern California. It was fascinating. And of course, Ken's here tonight. Whoops, I want to go back to that one. We had the very first hot jazz jubilee on Labor Day over at the um, Marriott Hotel, and they already are selling tickets for next year. So everybody will be back again. This has been a decade of civic anniversaries. There have been so many things that have, had, that have celebrated 50th anniversaries, but a lot of other anniversaries at the same time. Heald College celebrated 150 anniversaries, kind of topping all of us. Um, River City Presbyterian, United Methodist, the Chamber of Commerce, Cordova High School, and Cordova Baptist Preschool all celebrated their 50th anniversaries. The Live Steamers and Epis celebrated 40th anniversaries. And, and quite frankly, Larry and I were talking about the fact that we're really glad that we gave Epi Johnson a tribute when he was still here to, to appreciate it. And um, Epi's, Epi's left us now, but, but we know that his uh, family will continue the event, and we're really thrilled. 
the um, Cordova High Interact Club, Myers Navi, our, our legal firm, the best of the Russian speaking community, all turned 10 years old. The Children's Museum had an anniversary. I actually attended the um, 60th anniversary uh, over at the Korean Community Center of the Mutual Defense Pact between Korea and the United States that was adopted in 1953, and that was only on the 26th of October. And then, of course, First Covenant, just like um, uh, just like um, Hill College, First Covenant really topped um, everybody's celebration by um, celebrating 100 years, and that was an amazing event. So if we turn the page now, we we, our next chapter is transportation. Transportation is all about connectivity. Here in Rancho Cordova, we have always been so uh, separated um, on a linear basis because of the river, uh, Folsom Boulevard, the train tracks, the freeway, the, the runway the, uh, out at the uh, flight line out at Mather Field. And so connectivity has been repairing the connections that we lost that were never there because our roads could not go through. So one of the first things we did was to, um, uh, uh, we have started construction in partnership with Sacramento County on extending Fomoyer so that people will be able to get um, from International Drive over to uh, Matherfield Road. And in that particular case, we pushed over a fence. We, um, it seemed to us when Mather closed 20 years ago, that we would all tear down the fences and incorporate Mather Field back into the community, but that didn't happen. And naively, we, you know, we thought that was about time, but it didn't happen. So now we are doing that. So we pushed over the fence at Fomoyer. Um, uh, the picture on the left, we opened a, uh, the connection from North Mather Boulevard that goes to Mather Boulevard so that people will be able to drive around. We have remodeled Folsom Boulevard. $23 million from about, different, uh, from about 10 different kinds of uh, money, colors of money, as Cyrus calls it. Um, we, um, oh, who, who here is on Zinfandel and got a new sidewalk? Okay, see, we, we opened the new sidewalks on Zinfandel. Um, we uh, redid the entryway with brand new signal lights into Mills Junior High so that the kids and their parents can get back and forth to school more easily. The Cordovan, we started our second route on the Cordovan to serve the neighborhoods that um, are paying for the Cordovan. So now it goes down to the brand new consolidated Bureau of Autom Automotive Repair and then it goes to the uh, clubhouse out at Anatolia to pick up the people and bring them back to work or to, um, to the light rail station. But um, in the Anatolias, also we are now starting a uh, long awaited repairs on Douglas Road between the Rancho Cordova Parkway and Katahdin Road. So the people who live in Sunrise Village will be able to, uh, Sunrise Park, will be able to get back and forth much more easily. In terms of budget and finance, in the chapter of budget and finance, it is important to understand, just like Larry said, we still have 10 years of balanced budgets we still have 10 years of reserves. And we owe it a lot to our finance director, Donna Silva, but we really owe it to city staff and we owe it to our residents in Rancho Cordova. We have actually won an award for the way in which our budgets are expressed. And in your packets tonight, you have this issue of city views because this is the four page expression of where our money comes from and where our money goes to. So in her budget, budget presentation on uh, Monday night, Donna Silva gave us some very important statistics. This pie chart represents um, the sources of revenue in Rancho Cordova and just kind of a general uh, group of percentages. So here's what's going on. Right now today, 
Our property tax is at 6.2% over the original budget estimate. Sales taxes are up 4.2% over the original budget estimate. Our utility users tax, which we all voted to extend to, um, to cell phones and, and new technology, <coughs> is down, but quite frankly, it's just like uh, tobacco taxes, it's just like gasoline taxes. These are things that we are all personally saving money on. We're trying not to use so much electricity, we're trying not to use so much gas, and so it's okay that that's a declining revenue. But transient occupancy tax, which is what we collect in the hotels, is up by 6.3%, and that's terrific because that means that the economy is making people feel like coming to, um, uh, coming on vacation, go, taking holidays, the Jazz Jubilee had an effect on the hotels in Rancho Cordova. Um, travel and tourism is having an effect on bringing people to the hotels in Rancho Cordova. So that's an important number. And the revenue from building permits is up by a whopping 49.8%. So our total revenues taken all together are up by 5.7% over the original budget estimates and we are spending on budget, our expenditures are off by only 0.85, less than 1%. So our council policy transfers out a certain amount of money each year from the budget and puts it into reserve that can be used for um, capital improvements, transportation, things like that. But the bottom line is, and that's prudent for the future, but the bottom line is revenues are up, expenditures are flat, we still have a surplus. If we turn to the chapter of public safety, I want to introduce a special new person. I would like to introduce to you our next police chief, Captain Mike Gould. Stand over. We are extremely pleased to welcome Captain Gould. We're, you know, this is, this is like in the Air Force, it's hail and fell, farewell. We're always sorry to see the, the previous chief go, and she's done an exemplary job. She's actually um, started a new boulevard patrol that is um, dramatic, and I want to give you some stats in a minute. But we are extremely pleased to welcome um, Captain Gould, soon to be Chief Gould, on uh, supposedly the 17th of November. Um, he is a local boy. Believe it or not, he's one of seven boys in his family. He's got this family of seven boys. And they live out at Mather. They go to church locally. Um, his kids go to local schools. And his brother is a professor of um, fire science at American River College who served on the Sac County Fire Board, or I served on the Sac County Fire Board with him, and he's now on the Metro Fire Board. So this is a family that gives back to their community just like you all are doing. So another applause. <laughs> We have a winner here. He, um, he will be with us for the reception tonight, and then he has to go and um, um, handle some uh, family matters, and we'll see him again in another, another couple of weeks. The new Creative Patrol um, on Folsom Boulevard, um, it started only in September, and part of the reason it was so creative is because it's being, um, it, they're using reserves to, um, to staff this patrol, and already, they have made 49 visits to businesses. They stopped one robbery in progress. They did seven evaluations of security systems. They arrested seven people, or arrested or issued citations to seven people, and they arrested, arrested two trespassing citations, which is, which is how business owners can keep panhandlers away. You simply ask to have them declared trespassers, and uh, RCPD can come and do that. And that's a really important tool that people have. We started a red light camera, and I know that's not always really um, popular. However, ladies and gentlemen, um, they have um, cited 3,056 drivers <laughs> driving through only two intersections. 
Zinfandel and White Rock, and Olson and uh, Zinfandel. That's 3,056 accidents that could have happened and didn't. So, okay, this is a good thing. Um, we do a variety of different uh, focused efforts. The DUI checkpoints this year, there were 265 citations issued, a dozen drink, uh, drinking drivers were arrested, and 77 vehicles were towed. And, I, and, and all of the council members have been out on these, um, these DUI checkpoints. And when you get your car towed, it's because um, either you were impaired in some way, or you didn't have a license, or you were driving with a suspended license, or you shouldn't be driving with at all. So it just, it, it always amazes us that, that there are so many people like that who are, who are driving around our streets that it's really great to have them off the streets. Um, enforcing of uh, texting and cell phone use caught another 375 people who were not paying attention to their driving. We've had an 8% arrest uh, increase in drug arrests. And all these things are not just funded by, um, by the city and by our police department, but we get a tremendous amount of grants to help us do these things. The COP grants, uh, there's a, uh, and we do it in partnership with a lot of the other jurisdictions around here, because as you know, crooks don't care where, where they are. They can run up and down Sunrise and be in five different jurisdictions from the time they started whatever they were doing to the time somebody caught them. So this is a really good thing to have those kinds of partnerships. There are thousands of young people who participate in the police activities programs. It gives them something productive and generally sports related and healthy uh, for them to do. We try to stay proactive with our ordinances. We try to head off the latest uh, bright, dumb idea. So we, we do have a lot of ordinances that deal with medical marijuana, uh, uh, marijuana dispensaries. We've tried to be sensitive to what the state of California says, acknowledge what the federal government says, and make sure that it's not a nuisance in our neighborhoods. Um, computer gaming, uh, masquerading as an internet contact service was, was a thing. Um, about nine months ago, and we tried to head that one off. And then recycle businesses that, are, that, that somebody proposes to open, when they have no experience in opening a recycle business and having a clue what's gonna come through the door. Um, again, we have no throwaway neighborhoods. And so our Growing Strong Neighborhoods program works very hard. We've got dedicated probation officers now, and um, between the dedicated probation officers, the code enforcement, the focus on 50 program and adding a new community prosecutor for petty theft, we really expect that this program will continue to be just as success successful as it has been. Um, they actually just won an award last week for the kind of creative code enforcement that's going on in Rancho Cordova. <coughs> but we also couldn't do it without people power. Um, there's a lot of you who are involved already. RCPD is, is uh, increasing the number of volunteer uh, patrols, the VIPs, volunteers, um, oops, I don't know. Volunteer sheriff. Thank you, volunteers in partnership with the sheriff. Thank you, Shelly. Um, they're going to do patrols five days a week now. They, they patrol the neighborhoods, they keep up with what's going on, they do vacation checks that kind of thing, and they're also expanding these patrols to morning and afternoon next year. Um, I attended the Neighborhood Watch picnic where there were all the, all the people who are so vigilant, vigilant about watching out for their neighborhoods were there. And um, again, we ask you to report everything. Report it through your neighborhood website, um, keep track of it, but always when you're, you're suspicious of something, RCPD would rather have you call the non-emergency number because that way they make a record of what's going on. If they don't know it didn't, it happened, then they can't uh, see where there's a cluster of activity. And in that regard, the other thing that we're trying to get a handle on is theft of recyclables. 
So the city and the police department and our, um, our uh, uh, solid waste collection company are all working on how we deal with these people who go around at 2 or 5 o'clock in the morning and take all the recyclables out of our, out of our um, trash cans. A lot of people don't realize that that's something that we're obligated to, um, to, to um, do by the state of California. Our next chapter is partnerships, and that's part of why we're all here tonight. So in terms of partnerships, um, our, our Congress member, Dr. Ami Barra, opened his office just down the road on White Rock. Um, our assembly member who was here earlier, Ken Cooley, uh, opened his office here in the uh, city hall, um, went into the office that uh, his predecessor, Allison Huber, had. The park district um, opened a beautiful new pavilion at Hagen Park. It seats something like 250 people. Some of you were among the, are, are among the several hundred graduates. I know I see several people out here who are among the several hundred graduates of our Rancho Cordova Leadership Program. And um, one of the flyers you have is about a significant community uh, building event that's coming up in uh, November 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Our three-legged stool, our three-legged stool grew a new leg. Our three-legged stool now has four legs. And that's what travel and tourism is doing. Travel and tourism did open a 70,000 square foot uh, facility with like eight basketball courts and eight volleyball courts. But in reality, that's one of the things that is bringing the people to stay in our hotels on the weekend. Like many other business districts, our hotels have a really good, healthy um, occupancy rate during the week. But when all those business people go home on the weekend, then the hotels are available. And so that's what travel and tourism is doing. Golden State Water Company opened the new well on Paseo Drive and I, at Paseo at Malaga. And I know that Dan was there. It's a beautiful uh, well site. It actually just looks like another, um, another little house. Um, Sacramento County, actually after 20 years, was uh, uh, awarded Mather Field by the, the US Air Force. It's amazing that it took them 20 years to do that. But uh, they finally got all of, uh, got deed to all of Mather Field. Um, Regional Sand decided they would charge us all more money to pay for this uh, retrofit of the, the water treatment plant, but the bright side of that is that we are, they are coming back to us with a report on how to reclaim water, how to recycle water, so that we'll be able to use non-potable water for landscaping and irrigation, if that's all possible. We really want to know that. We celebrated National Library Workers' Day. And just uh, uh, again on the 26th of, of um, um, October, the library opened this garden up here on the, uh, where it says Read and Feed. This is a, a project, a joint project of the Library Authority and the Junior League. And um, people are going to be able to learn about gardening. Solborn Farms opened a new outdoor classroom that was built by the Sacramento Leadership Class. Our schools continue to improve. They continue to tackle their challenges, you know, the incredible number of languages that are spoken in our schools. But we have two really exciting programs. Um, last year, the city council banded together and helped AM win dodge the um, closure bullet. And um, the, board, the um, board of Education for Sac City Unified decided to keep it open. And so now they are playing host to a program that is unique around the United States. There is no other uh, elementary school and high school, so K through 12 Waldorf program available in the United States. And it's not co-located because it's AM Wynn and, and George Washington Carver High School, but it is there in the same neighborhood and they are so close and it's unique throughout the United States. 
So then in um, uh, Mitchell Junior High and in Cordova High, they have started the International Baccalaureate Program. And they, um, I mean, how more perfect than our culturally diverse schools to put a, an international program into. So these are things that are really exciting for our school district partners. Our business community is involved in partnership with Rancho Cordova with their volunteerism. Uh, VSP Optical Group was just out in the White Rock and uh, Cordova Town neighborhoods this past week. Uh, Stantec Engineering Firm and Ampac Fine Chemicals have both been involved in um, volunteerism here in Rancho Cordova. <clears throat> Our um, friends at the um, um, at the Veterans Administration, we have um, we were will be uh, celebrating um, Veterans Day in a couple of weeks, actually next week, and this Veterans Day will be totally unique. We joined a uh, a program that I heard about at the U.S. Conference of Mayors, a community partnership to help recognize and bring some honor to the people who serve this country in Vietnam. And there's a whole host of us that that was our generation. And so even though it's late in coming, it's going to be a really moving event uh, next Monday at the, the historical, I mean, the uh, VA Plaza. And um, because we're all getting older, we also want to give a shout out to the Historical Society because we truly are losing some of, so many of the people who founded Rancho Cordova early on, and yet the Historical Society is working hard to record these people on videotape, and I think there are about 160 interviews uh, to date with people, a lot of whom have left us already. So it's really important that we acknowledge, him, acknowledge them for doing that. The Folsom Cordova Community Partnership, another wonderful partner around here, moved to a new location. And uh, this crazy thing up here in the up here in the uh, corner. Um, first of all, Metro Fire got a FEMA grant to do a wildfire management plan. Here we are along the Met uh, the American River Parkway. And there's no question that when fires get started, it's very difficult to keep them off of our back fences. So that's, um, so they're writing this plan, but they've also started a Western Regional Training Center that is going to be unique in the United States and it will have uh, a variety of different training um, um, structures. There will be whitewater rafting training. There will, they've actually been donated an entire aircraft by FedEx that they can do aircraft rescue training in. And they'll have all sorts of structures like, like this uh, crazy thing on the top. Um, and so we broke ground on that one last week. Turning to our business community, it was our pleasure to join this region in first of all working to keep the Sacramento Kings in the area, and then in celebrating the fact that they are staying. And um, when you see the pizza guys and the VSP logos up here, this is things, you know, people think it's downtown, but it's not, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have three major businesses here in Rancho Cordova, VSP and Pizza Guys being two of them, who uh, are some of their major supporters. And it's an incredible advertising venue for them. And these kinds of things really do affect us locally. It's not just the entertainment, it's also the opportunities for jobs, it's the opportunities for economic development that it brings. Our business community has grown astoundingly. We also uh, are participating in the Google Challenge. In order to help our small businesses, it's very important that they have an active and um, uh, user-friendly web presence. We found that 97% of everybody is looking for their goods and services online. And if you can't make appointments, check on appointments, find the location of the business that you're looking for, then that business doesn't really exist for you. And so the Google Challenge provides a website and a domain name free 
for an entire year. And if you want to stay with Google after that year, then the, all those services are available for less than $20 a month. So we took this program to the Rancho Cordova Business Expo and to the Metro Chamber Business Expo, and we are getting people signed up. There's going to be another event coming up with, um, in partnership with Tech Connective on the 19th of November. We participated in the business walk a couple of weeks ago. And I have to tell you, you, you it, this is kind of like walking campaigns. You don't realize what's going on in Rancho Cordova until you walk to people's front doors. Um, we found that the old Pitney Bowes company is now here in Rancho Cordova. Um, it's going to be called Novatech, and they are here specifically to do all of the mailing for Covered California. This is that business to business sales that people talk about. We found Renaissance Food Group, who actually is a part of uh, uh, Calavo um, International Food Company. They started off doing avocados. They package all sorts of freshly prepared Mexican foods that are sold in Rayleigh's and places like that. And then we found this thing and we actually ran into them in the elevator when we were, we were on the way up to their, um, to their uh, offices. These people, CyberSoft and Cyber Energy, are involved in solar technology. This is a gentleman who came here from um, Shanghai, and he founded this company to, um, to build control. Let me see, let me say this. They're a leader in control technology serving the worldwide process control, building control, and equipment control markets. Cybersoft's patented model-free adaptive control technology for automatically controlling physical processes is a major breakthrough. They make four-channel inverters for the solar energy industry. Now, I didn't have a clue what all that meant. But what it means is that your solar systems work better. And this is, a, this is part of the growing technology. We talk about all this innovation, and it's happening right here in Rancho Cordova. Probably one of the most exciting things going on is the fact that VSP Global stayed. That you've all read in the paper. They were fighting with the state legislature over the, the fallout from how they would set up this health exchange. They worked that out. VSP stayed. That would have meant a huge drain on Rancho Cordova, and so we can celebrate that. And then, quite frankly, we also have to celebrate the fact that Covered California brought 500 people to work in town, to ride the Cordova, to Cordova van, to eat at all of our restaurants. It's been amazing. Um, business, you won't believe the number of ribbon cuttings. This is um, Cat Village and Zinfandel Place and Soho Sushi Bar and Grill, Al Dente Pasta and Burger Rocks make seven places that you could eat at Zinfandel Village. Uh, the Wok Pan Asian Grill, Panera Bread, Habit Burger. Um, when they, uh, when Panera opens, that's going to make 11 different places that you can eat in Cat Village. Um, they also did the um, UC Davis expanded over there, and they're doing uh, construction drawings to submit for construction of two new buildings on the corner next to Kinko's. We are growing dramatically. On Olson Drive, we have the Coriana Plaza about to finish, Panda opened. Um, there's a little thing called Crazy for Yogurt that filled the, uh, the old uh, sandwich shop. And there's a brand new um, nail store that opened next to the um, um, mailing house in there. Even Kmart, is, that plaza is being remodeled and that's been all over the, the Sun River website. So before I talk about the VA, 
the, the ribbon cuttings that we've been to, the effort, Anytime Fitness, Peak Adventures, Off the Skewer, Robinette F Fitness Center, Walgreens Number no. 2, the AG Fashion Institute, Pinnacle College, National University, the Joint, which is a cleverly named chiropractic office, <laughs> Sunrise to Sunset, Insphere Insurance Solutions, um, Panda, Crazy Free Yogurt, Marshalls Ross, um, American River Brewery, a wonderful new addition to Rancho Cordova. Rudy's Hideaway has a food truck. Who saw the food truck? Isn't that marvelous? The Safeway gas station will open. Uh, Famous Footwear is going to open on, on Olsen Drive and something called Tsukiji Sushi, that's a mouthful, is going to open on Bradshaw next to the grocery store there. Um, and then our VA projects, the VA hospital, the VA complex is, is, is expanding dramatically. And so in a few months, we're going to see uh, breaking ground construction on Bob's favorite project, which is the Veterans Village Residential. And that will be absolutely terrific. <coughs> but we don't go a year without demolishing something. <laughs> And so we demolish the no value in. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and if you haven't seen it before, the pictures on the left are what will replace it, the Los Rios Community College. This is going to be absolutely terrific. In terms of the business community, um, we are very much invested. Part of the whole reason we have this four-legged stool is the fact that we're very much invested in the economic benefit that there is in arts, sports, culture, and entertainment. There's, there's incontroversial evidence, incontrovertible, whatever, evidence <laughs> that these, um, all of these activities bring people into our community. This is so important. We are participating in the next economy, and, um, and we're making sure that people know that it is fun to live in Rancho Cordova. Our business community is healthy. That's the bottom line. Our business community is healthy because of our diversity, and it's not just the diversity of our 84 languages that are spoken in our schools and, and in our community. It's healthy because of the diversity of business. We are about as recession-proof as any community can get in this region or in California. We have a job for everyone, everything from the CEOs of the Fortune 500 companies down to the auto dismantlers um, up and down Sunrise Boulevard, and everything in between. We don't have all our eggs in one basket. We have a huge diversity of business, and any way you look at it, um, one of the things that makes our business community great is because we've been working on it so long is the fact that now there are people locating here like the Pitney Bowes uh, Covered California example. They locate here because their clients are here. And that's why we get more sales tax from our business to business sales than we do from our retail sales. But that's a very important dynamic for any community. And it's something really special that we have going on in Rancho Cordova. So what's next? I can tell you, from my perspective as a three-term mayor, this year is different. It is now different from 2008. It is different from last year. There are so many different things that we are asked to participate in. Something is happening here, and people are really beginning to notice. They're taking a fresh look at what Rancho Cordova has to offer. They ask us to be places, to give our opinion, to participate in things. This was a, uh, an economic forum, an, an economic and voter education forum that I was asked to participate in last month by a papa. A papa is the Asian Pacific Islander American Public Affairs Association. They started here locally 
uh, about 20 years ago, and now they're nationwide. This is their 12th annual Voter Education and Economic Development Forum. We, um, this is the kind of thing that we are being asked to participate in, and it's not going to stop. For me, this has been a very unique year. I've had some unique experiences. Um, I toured Folsom Prison. I received an honorary black belt. <laughs> Do not mess with me. <laughs> and this morning, some of you know, um, I was out at 5 o'clock in the morning looking for ghosts at Kilgore Cemetery. This has been a unique year. but. Aside from the lightheartedness of what's gone on, there is so much happening that we really need to look at the concept of electing a full-time mayor. We're not talking about a strong mayor. This is not Kevin Johnson trying to take over the world. But Rancho Cordova, ladies and gentlemen, is not a part-time city. And Rancho Cordova needs a full-time mayor. So that's something we're going to consider. Sounds like you're working full-time. <laughs> ah. So, um, let's talk about home building. Let's see if that works. No, it didn't work that way. Okay, so home building. Home builders are building again. You heard about the 49% um, increase in building permit rev revenue. Um, we are up almost double the number of residential building permits. Lennar and Woodside are still building in Cavallo Ranch and Sunridge Park and their solar homes, so that kind of makes us the uh, sort of the solar home capital of the region. Elliott is building in villages and everything they have under construction over there is sold already. Richmond American is about to start construction in the Anatolia Village 3. We have reapproved three neighborhoods that total 806 homes, and we have two major communities that are moving through the process again. Uh, big specific plans that are, have been on hold for the last five years, and all of a sudden they're coming back around. And for those of you in Anatolia, what it really means is that we are really, 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 really close to an announcement about a grocery store. And Craig is applauding. Um, the gentleman who, uh, uh, the, the, the CEO of the uh, Pitney Bowes office over here, he moved his family from Granite Bay to live in the Anatolias, and his wife is pining for a grocery store. So, you know, it's like every, it's all the rest of us who are um, below Highway 50, and we have Walgreens and CVS uh, as our neighborhood corner store. We are looking forward to a grocery store. The other thing we're doing, actually, um, um, we have competitive campaigns underway right now for a major state office building and for a pro professional sports team. These kinds of opportunities are coming to us, and we are really campaigning hard for them. We will continue to be award-winning. Um, several pages of awards. Our city is, uh, uh, our people get awards for their own personal excellence, like this um, uh, financial reporting thing, and we get awards because of who we are as a community and what we are able to accomplish together. Being an All-America City in the first 10 years is absolutely incredible. That's a very unique, um, a very unique honor to be bestowed upon us, and to have be to have been named for this uh, second year in a row to the Forbes list of best small places to work in the United States is also equally unique. We're going to be transitioning this year. As you know, um, we are going to welcome a new city manager. Uh, interviews will, will start soon. We are welcoming our new police chief. We're going to transition to an internal planning department. We are trying to ensure that we are communicating with people in all possible forms, because it's not just those of us who are sitting here in the room. There are a lot of people that we want to reach. And so we are on, uh, we do have a Facebook page. We are on Twitter. 
I make um, YouTube videos um, kind of uh, every 10 days to, to once a month. We want to be sure that we reach everybody in all, by all the means that we possibly can. It's really important that we reach what is being called nowadays the young professional generation or the millennials. These are people who choose a location before they choose a job. And they look, choose a location like Rancho Cordova because it's fun, because there's so much going on, because they see uh, housing that fits their needs, because they see activities and they see people of their generation. Um, when you live in a, a city like ours that has such a large active business district, we are wired. That's one of the advantages. We have all the fiber optics in the world. We have all the technology that people in the, in the young professional generation are demanding. It's here for them. Two, uh, a month ago, I'd never heard the term civic hacking. I didn't know what a hackathon was. I thought hacking was something negative, you know, people hack into your computer. Well, it turns out it's a valid term. And it's the kind of thing that young people do to get together to solve problems. That's the kind of thing that we can host here in Rancho Cordova. And we have younger people on staff, yeah, a lot younger than Ted and me, who really want to help connect young people and get them involved in Rancho Cordova. We want to show them the quality of life that we have here in Rancho Cordova. The kids are our future. There's no question about it. Um, and we have students tonight who've joined us. So the students who are here from uh, Cordova, Mills, Mitchell, and any other school, would you all raise your hands? <laughs> See, this is really important to me. You know, I'm blessed with, uh, well, uh, Bob has grandchildren here. I'm blessed with having our six youngest live in our neighborhood. And, um, and I really want to talk directly to the kids who are here tonight. And I just want to assure you that the kind of behavior that you see in the national media is not something that you will ever find happening in Rancho Cordova. The people who disgrace the office to which they are elected, that kind of thing will never happen in Rancho Cordova. It's no wonder that people feel that voting is not important anymore. It's no wonder that people would never even dream of serving an elected office or uh, uh, working in government service. Everything they hear on the national media is negative, and it gives them a terrible impression. And yet, as John McGinnis pointed out on the radio yesterday, when you consider the number of people that you hear about on, on the radio and the TV, relative to the Ted however many um, uh, elected officials there are throughout the United States, and he can probably tell you, that's a very small number. But at the same time, that's all we ever hear about, that very small number. And it's just so important that you understand and believe that that kind of thing will never go on in Rancho Cordova. Everyone in this building, whether they work for, for one of the governments, whether they work for one of the organizations, we're all working very hard to ensure that you feel good about living in your city. And that's why we have events like tonight, because you all are the future of Rancho Cordova. These people are the future of Rancho Cordova. Remember what Dave Roberts said. Dave pointed out that our future is, great, is going to be greater than our past, and that will something, be something to behold. This is our plan. This is why we're here tonight. This is why we have these events and these activities. We've spent a decade reinventing government, and now we're redefining fun. There's something for everyone here in Rancho Cordova. And we need everyone in Rancho Cordova to participate. Thank you.